All right, all right, all right. I have a feeling that a lot of you are getting tired of the continuum hypothesis. I apologize, um, but I want to go do one last CH video, um, and we will move on to other subjects, I promise, okay? We might come back to it later. Um, anyways, let's make this brief. I want to try to validate um, the axiom that zero times higher level cardinalities above alpha naught is undefined. I tried to attack it through set theory, and I think it maybe fell flat. So let's try to uphold it philosophically. Here are discrete points between zero and one. And obviously, the way I've written it, it's finite, but we're going to, um, we'll just leave it finite for now, okay? There is obviously a zero non-zero dichotomy inherent in the fact that we have discreteness, okay? We have zero, and we have the first non-zero discrete number here. Now, as I make these infinite in the sense that we have all, if not, discrete points, um, it becomes more problematic to define what that first discrete point is. In other words, if I were to say what's the first rational number, and I apologize, it's kind of hot here. I'm in a suit, and it's Father's Day, and it's, you know, a little unprofessional to be sweating, but, um, you know, I hope you'll forgive me. It's it's really, uh, man, it's hot. It's already June and it's hot. So, okay. Anyways, um, it, it may be problematic to say what the first rational number is because there's, you know, a point zero, 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 infinite number of zeros and then one. That doesn't make any sense. It, it would be problematic philosophically to have a number that's um, a ratio of integers, but then you would have to invoke infinities and that, that becomes problematic in that sense. But... I would still say that it doesn't become contradictory to speak of a discrete point above zero. Okay. It would be, or the first, it, you could you could invoke uh, a, a discrete non-zero point above zero such that it's the first uh, point in our um, set of points. Okay. I mean, you can do that. Okay. It may be paradoxical once you try to define it. Okay. But it's not paradoxical in the sense that you are, uh, in, in the sense that your definitions are contradictory. To talk about a first discrete point in an in infinite set of discrete points is not itself contradictory. Okay, so that's logic that may be hard for a lot of people to accept. Okay, because there, there again, there is a mathematical paradox, but uh, the mathematical paradox doesn't overrule the fact that this point is now defined to exist based on the rules that we've set up, okay? Assuming we have an infinite number of points. With the continuum, though, we not only have, if I were to ask, well, what's the first real number about zero? I not only have the obvious paradox, which I don't deny, okay? And that's a paradox inherent in infinity itself, okay? So that might be, um, don't blame me. I mean, that, that's a paradox in, inherent in, in infinity and the infinitesimal and the whole, the whole definition there itself. But at the very least, I would argue that the, the, the paradox isn't a paradox of definitions. It's a paradox mathematically. If I talk about the continuum, though, and I ask myself, what's the first real number above zero? Well, I have a problem is that I've denied even the concept of discreteness. So how can I speak of the first anything above zero? I don't have discreteness any longer. And so the whole idea of the zero non-zero dichotomy becomes itself paradoxical according to the continuum, all right? And I would argue according to any kind of higher level cardinality above all of not. Now, if you accept that logic, and a lot of you won't, okay, and it's not mathematically rigorous, it's philosophical, but if you do, I believe that some central tenets of uh, mysticism uh, begin to become rational. In other words, the idea of something that transcends duality, uh, for instance, the zero non-zero dichotomy, that begins to become something understandable and something maybe we can even uh, rationally analyze. Maybe it's something, as long as we're willing to get beyond, as long as we're really willing to realize that set theory itself is an approximation. It's a set of rules set up by mathematicians who wanted a rational universe and maybe weren't able to find one. Okay, as long as we accept that set theory is an approximation and not the total reality here, that if you accept that there is a mathematical reality, you are accepting that our ideas about it may be limited, 
um, then I think that it opens up whole new visas for a kind of metaphysical mathematics that isn't irrationalism. It isn't, you know, getting into um, using sacred numbers to predict your love life. I mean, it's something that is grander than that, because that's very limited in my view. If you really want to talk about mathematics as a sacred journey, then you're talking about it as a, a means of approaching the absolute from the standpoint of humility. And that right there, I think, transcends anything that um, can be spoken of in words. And so from that standpoint, I'm going to leave this to the philosophers, the mathematicians, and yes, yes, theologians. Thank you.